Welcome back everyone. Today we are checking out the Top Fuel 5 behind me. We've got it right here in person, a brand new 2020-22 two model. 2022. All right, so this is a newer kind of model for Trek. The Top Fuel line has been expanding and becoming more of an everyday trail bike, especially with this newest refresh. Many of the features they've gotten rid of are the remote lockouts, and that's on all the models. Doesn't matter if you go all the way up to the high-end ones, but now it's back to the kind of Fuely X styling the way it was previously. They now have 120 mils of travel on the front and rear. With this one, you've got a RockShox Recon on it. Pretty basic front fork for a full suspension, but it's not like it's an entry-level fork. It still blows the water out of pretty much everything that comes on a Trek Merlin, except for, you know, the eight. Um, Performance-wise, it's gonna handle it really well. Downsides to it, a fork and suspension setup like this, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. And that's really a big downside to going with cheaper, higher-end suspension is the weight performance it still works really well but you're going to feel a little bit of weight and on the top fuel line it's going to be interesting to see because overall it was once their xc racer now it's been pushed down the line and it is no longer that and it's not even like an xc racer class it is now their new down country setup so having 120 mils of travel means you can do a little bit more rough stuff but this bike is still designed to roll really fast on the flats and climb really, really well. They've paired it up nicely with the Dior 12 speed. So this is kind of the go-to setup for pretty much every entry level higher end bike now. Dior is really well priced and really well performing for its price point overall. It works superbly. They've had it in the 10 speed before. This is the same thing with a slightly changed derailleur, and then obviously those two extra gears giving you that really low setup too. This obviously isn't that 52 tooth setup like the GX stuff is leaning to now. Shimano still is sticking to the 50 or 51 kind of range. Still super low gears, still gonna get you up the climbs really, really easy, and I don't know how much you'll actually use the lowest gear. It is really just there for emergencies. Front crank they have obviously cut a bit of cost with, with the Praxis one. The front crank is probably the least important part of your whole bike. It doesn't really do much. They all have the same narrow wide chain ring set up on it, so it still shifts and works really well. It doesn't need to shift on the front anymore, it's just controlling the shifting of the chain line on the back. But this is gonna be potentially heavier. Little things which will add up. It's not a big deal, but it's something worth noting. The brakes on it are just a dual piston setup. They work really well. It is Shimano again, so you're gonna have some good performance out of it. A lot of people like the Shimano entry level stuff because it still has some good touchy feel to it, so it feels very responsive. A Transex dropper post, again, these are improving year after year, so it's gonna work good. It's got you into that level. You just get a teeny bit heavier, and then it's not as snappy, and then the travel is a little weird where you're kind of getting these weird like 130 mil increments instead of 125, 150. I don't know why they choose just slightly different increments than every other major manufacturer. Cool new feature this year though, they have put that internal storage chamber on the aluminum models, which is surprising. It's nice that they've done that. You still get that little storage bag in it. We're gonna get it out. There's a storage bag in there. I'm not forcing it out. You still get that little storage bag so you can take a flat repair stuff. This is definitely a smaller chamber than the carbon setups. I would be surprised if you would fit comfortably anything else other than what they say you can put in there, which is like an air canister, some kind of flat repair tools and stuff. They used to say a tube, but I honestly don't think you'd fit it in there. It's gonna be very tight if you have a tube in there. I think most likely what they'll aim to do is just set up with the tubeless repair kit. Comes with that bottle cage again, which really makes no sense. I don't know why they put it on there. Maybe just something to hold so the shell doesn't fall off. It's fully replaceable, but every single bike comes with one. Feels a little firmer this year too. It doesn't feel as loose, which I don't know if that's just the aluminum fitting or if it's the new 2022s, but it, it feels like a good firm fit. Tire-wise, you are getting your team issue set up. So these are tubeless setup from the box, which is nice. 
an XR4, which is pretty surprising. So that's leaning again on that downcountry setup. It's gonna work really well for traction and downhill and aggressive terrain, but it's still a relatively slow rolling tire. It's not the slowest by any means, it's still fast, but compared to previous years of Fuel X, this is an aggressive tire. This is definitely leaning towards the faster downhill crowd and the more aggressive downhill crowd compared to the faster rolling people who would actually want to get out to the trails a little faster on the gravel or trail to it. So it is something I think if someone was buying this as maybe an XC bike slash race bike, you're gonna switch those tires out to something a little faster rolling. Obviously you'll lose a little traction but it's definitely gonna make up in the speed wise of things. And this might just be because of the level of bike this is. This is an entry level setup. So having a bigger, more aggressive, softer setup tire is gonna be more appealing to everyone. It's gonna give you more traction. It's gonna easier ride. So that's kind of nice to see. Little details, the Avarta seat with just the regular seat rails, no of that fancy Augustine or whatever they call it. Again, it's just little things which um, lightweight the bike, make it lighter weight. Um, overall, we're about 34 pounds for this one. Let's check. Yeah, surprisingly enough, this is pretty similar weighted to the Fuel EX5. This is 34.22 pounds. So not the lightest trail bike around, but it's not huge. I mean, you could change out a few things to take some weight off, but realistically speaking, if this was your backup bike for to be a little faster rolling and then you have your downhill bike or enduro bike, I think it's gonna be really appealing and it's still gonna be a nice lightweight option. We just get a little jaded compared to the higher end lightweight trail bikes and they're only hitting around the 29, 30 pound mark for the most part. The 9.8 on this one's like 28, so it is a big difference, but it's not huge. It's not definitely not huge. The rear shock this year is an X Fusion. Similar setup in suspension to the Fuel EX5, just in the 120 mil counterparts. Does make me wonder if these are expandable to 130 with just internals, but probably not at this level of shock and fork. 120 mils on both the front and rear is gonna be really good. It's gonna work great. You do have the flip chip and it's down at the bottom here where you're able to actually adjust the suspension and that is gonna change its angles and such. So it drops the bottom bracket, it changes the head tube angle and it makes it more downhill friendly and or if you switch it back, it's gonna make it more flat ground friendly. Just changes that geometry and it's really noticeable to be honest. Overall, nice looking bike, decent grips to it, lock on. Going with the standard handlebar diameter here with 31.8, it's not jumping up to 35. It is not a trail bike, but it is a trail bike. They're still trying to cut weight as much as they can. Otherwise, it is a really clean looking bike. Cabling wise, it's very well done. They've built into the armor protection cable runs. They, it looks superbly clean. Even the exits of the frame are super tight, super clean. They're getting rid of all the extra ports because they know nobody's gonna be adding essentially a two by to it. Obviously you can't even add a two by two, but there was a time when they always seemed to have an extra port and it seems like now everything's getting cleaner. Everybody knows this is the setup of bike. Yeah, you can change a lot of parts on it, upgrade it, but you're not, changing the whole idea of the bike. It's still gonna be a 12 speed. It's either gonna go wireless or electronic. So it's it's gonna get simpler and cleaner from here on out. Or we hear talks of getting rid of the derailleur and going to more gearbox stuff. So let's see where that goes. I think Trek will be pretty slow to integrate a gearbox to it. You can have some of the smaller wilder brands do that first. But hopefully some of this helped you out and that this is kind of informative to you. It is a great bike. Who it's for is a little tricky. I'm not exactly sure. The Fuel X is a really fast, capable, for everything bike. This one is just a bike which I think if you wanna go a little faster than the Fuel X guys, in general for the flat ground, rolly flowy trails, this is where you wanna go. But if you're aiming to do any downhill park or any downhill stuff, I'm still leaning towards a few of the X's that go to do everything bike. This is just a faster one in everything but downhill. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck.